Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. What will it take for you to give up on silver? Let's explore. There's a lot of different opinions about the silver market these days from people in this community. Many people say this is an opportunity to buy. The price is dropping. In fact, as I record this video, the price is barely hanging on to $19 an ounce, just barely in the ask price. In fact, as I just made that statement, it fell one cent to $18.99. Uh, but nonetheless, some people feel that uh, we're at the bottom or we're going to go drop even further. Um, no one really knows. I've taken some polls on this channel. I've been wrong more times than I can account uh, where silver is going to go. I thought the bottom was going to be around $20 an ounce, um, and it blew right past that, and it could go down even lower before it goes up again. How high will it go? No one really knows. As much as anybody may prognosticate and talk about, including me on this channel, because I do like to talk about what others are saying, both good and bad when it comes to silver. In fact, this title may seem negative to some of you. Uh, what will it take for you to give up on silver? But it's really to challenge your thinking. And if anything, that's what I want to do on this channel is, is challenge uh, your mindset and your thinking, no matter what your viewpoint is. I like to take a look at contrarian points of views um, from from even from the bullish side, the very bullish side of silver, to the very, very negative side of silver. I like to see it all. I like to be challenged. Now, I have my own opinions, and uh, I am a very ideological person by nature, and I have strong views. Um, and with silver, it's I would say it's probably fairly moderate. I guess one would probably make that assessment that my views on silver are moderate, although uh, some people would... Uh, vehemently disagree with me about silver being a hedge uh, against economic instability or a savings vehicle or a way to preserve your wealth, especially considering its price performance over the last a couple of months certainly is not preserving your wealth if you measure it by those standards. The dollar, as we know, has been losing value um, steadily, fairly dramatically, but even so, not as much as silver over the past couple of months. Um, but one thing I always say um, in my videos recently, in the last past year or so, is that you can take any two dates, any two dates, or even small periods of dates in history for any commodity, any investment class, and make that commodity or investment class look like a big, huge winner or make it look like the worst investment you could ever make. Silver is no exception there. In fact, silver is a very volatile market right now. But then again, anything and everything is pretty volatile these days. Uh, I don't think there's really a safe strategy anywhere. The only thing that we have with silver, I believe, is its intrinsic value, its historic value. Uh, and, and I think that is where we must think about it really less in terms of dollars and more in terms of the weight, what it is, the physical uh, commodity itself or the physical precious metal as a hedge. Think about it in terms of ounces instead of dollars. Now, for those of you who are uh, you know, sour on silver or down on silver, you may say, well, that's just an excuse. You're just writing that off because, because silver's losing. It's losing its price. But what about its value? I posted a video quite a while ago, several, I mean, years ago, actually, called Silver Will Never Increase in Value. And it, and it didn't really articulate the way I'd like, but basically the message in that video was that the price may change, but the value remains the same. But how do you measure the value of silver? That's gonna be something that's gonna depend upon you uh, in your research and, and I guess probably your confidence in the metal as, a, as that store of value over the course of thousands of years. Look at it through the lens of history and what it has done. 
What you see before you here are four bullion coins of different price points and really, in a sense, different values these days. The Silver Eagle that you see here, it sells for quite a bit of premium. And you will capture some of that premium back if you were to go, to, if you were to go sell it. However, the spread between the premium that you pay against the premium that you get back is far greater than the uh, than that which you get with any of these other pieces, save for maybe the Libertads, which tend to have their own kind of numismatic value, it seems these days. Uh, just depends on. But the, nonetheless, the uh, Krugerrand and the Britannia here, uh, they, they typically, you know, are more stable in terms of their uh, price point and value um, that you get uh, back. But nonetheless, uh, that's kind of where those are. They're, they're, they're bullion coins, and it is what it is. The quarter that you see here um, represents uh, actual true money that was spent. Now, this is a proof version from 1964 that you see here. A nice example, but really, essentially, these can be bought even in this kind of condition sometimes for not a whole lot above spot. Um, and it's an example of what money used to be. Um, and where our, our money essentially was precious metals, both gold and but especially silver. For the vast majority of history, silver was used as money, uh, traded as currency. Uh, no more these days. It's all completely fiat, which means it's by government decree. That is the faith. That is the store of value because the government says so. And yes, there is something to be said for it. But what will it take? Uh, in terms of the price performance before you give up? That is the standing question here. Um, what is what is going to break you on silver? Is it going to mean that's going to have to fall below $15 an ounce? Or will you be even more emboldened to buy it? What about if the price falls to $12 an ounce and the premiums skyrocket? Is that going to frustrate you so much that you're going to give up on it? I tell you what, we've seen a dramatic move in premiums with the spot price dropping that's really frustrated a lot of people. And there is, there's a handful of folks that have been commenting on my videos that have been understandably frustrated with precious metals. Now, some of that very well could be because they were sold a bill of goods on silver. In other words, silver's about to break out. Silver's about to go and skyrocket. It's gonna be any day now. We've got inflation coming. Oh, let's wait for the next CPI numbers to come out. Just wait for the next GDP report, um, you know, and, and, and we'll see. We'll be, we're in recession. Well, it takes, we got to wait till the tail end of the recession for silver to shine. But the thing is, is that if you look through history, sometimes it takes a little while for silver and gold to pop out and break out. And what does a breakout of silver mean? I read a report recently, and I may do a video on this separately, that talked about if history is of any guide, that silver will probably skyrocket because of what happened from, happened from 2008 to 2011. The problem is, is 2011 was its own anomaly, in a sense, kind of independent of what was going on at the time. That was a false sense of value. Silver was overvalued at that time. Uh, is silver undervalued now? I would make the argument that yes, it is, but that may not necessarily be the case. Um, in the end, the best thing to do is to, is to be realistic about silver so that it'll take much more for you to give up on silver as we go through this rocky, volatile road with silver's price. But I'm curious, even for the most adamant silver stackers out there, please post in the comment section below what it would take for you to finally give up on silver. And what does giving up on silver look like? What does that mean? That means that you just sell it all in frustration. And what have I been telling people to do is to not do that. You can give up on buying it. In fact, I could totally understand if the markets just do crazy for you, do not buy under any circumstance. In fact, under any circumstance anyway, no matter what, even as the price goes up, even as there's excitement, if it's not right and does not fall within your budget, do not buy. Do not let me or anybody else try to convince you to buy silver. Um, even if we think it's a good thing to do to buy for ourselves, even if we see the market conditions be as such in such a way that um, we think it's a good buy, 
We are not financial advisors. We do not know your own personal uh, cir circumstance or situation. Uh, I have uh, documented on this channel examples of people buying in all different ways and different forms. I myself have bought more silver this year than I have any other year. That does not mean that you should, by the way. Um, that's just what I was doing. It was a calculated risk on my part um, based off of my strategies. Uh, but I'm really no more informed than many of you. In fact, some of my detractors would say I'm very misinformed, far less informed, um, especially with regards to uh, price suppression, which, by the way, I'm more open-minded to now than ever before. But make no mistake, being realistic about silver is also realizing that the natural market plays a much greater role than any price suppression or even manipulation could ever have. And we know there's manipulation. I've documented it time and time again on this very channel. But notwithstanding, silver, what is it about silver that, uh, that uh, um, is attractive to you? Um, it's its intrinsic value. It is what it is. It's a tactile, tangible asset that you can hold in your hand. An ounce of silver will always be an ounce of silver, no matter the price. Although people can be pretty jaded by that, understandably so. Uh, you know, with something that's down in price and it's not valued as much by the uh, contemporary community or the contemporary market, um, you know, you tend to have less respect for it. And I can understand that. I totally understand both positions in terms of silver. But in the end, it's about being realistic about the metal uh, overall. And, um, and I do tend to take the middle of the road. I'm not a middle of the road kind of guy. For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that I'm not a middle of the road type of guy, but I believe in being even keeled. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a believer in being fiscally responsible. I'm not a believer in paying yourself first. I'm a believer in paying your bills first, your financial obligations, getting out of debt. Being debt-free is the most important thing um, other than obviously, you know, the things that you can't just pay off immediately, like your house or maybe your car, but I think you should pay more than the uh, minimum balance on those things as you accumulate silver and gold modestly through those times. But otherwise, you know, we can't bet the bank on silver. We can't bet the bank on gold. Um, but silver tends to be kind of the bane of the existence of kind of where we are at these days and it's taken the biggest hit. Gold to silver ratio is is at almost a two year high, and that's pretty dramatic considering that two years ago it went well over a hundred to one. We could see that again, folks. Now, what will it take for you to give up on silver under the conditions that I mentioned? Again, post in your comment section below. I'm not telling you to give up on silver, obviously either, but I'm also. Uh, encouraging you, those that are, that are extremely bullish on silver, those of you who are going to put in comments, that's nothing but manipulation. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying and being able to prove that and being able to see. We can't always use as, uh, that as an excuse. And think about um, uh, the metal in terms of it and realism in terms of the actual market, what's happening to the metal. Because you're going to set yourself up for, for dis disappointment if you're just going to blame manipulation all the time, because it's never going to stop um, the way that you're thinking. The natural market is never going to stop either. Um, so we'll see what happens with silver. But let me know what your thoughts are on silver in the comment section below on what it would take for you to give up on it. I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video. And I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.